Good morning. It's uh, September 9th. This morning, I got an email from a dear, dear beloved brother. And I'm not going to share with you, of course, the content of, uh, contents of that email uh, because that's between me and my brother. And I love you. That ain't none of your business. But this brother shared with me some, and he also shared with me some very interesting information as well. It's very easy right now, brethren, Church of the Living God and sisters, for us to get depressed, to feel kicked down, and stuff like that. You know, personally, I will share with you, um, in looking for work still, still looking for work um, <laughs> in order to get a job up here up here in Illinois you need <laughs> you need to have a face mask and no matter what your employment is even at gas stations now there are some that are uh, very less lenient, like uh, there's a, a station down here by the, down the way where I go to get some little things like my milk and stuff like that, um, where they don't, you know, push the face mask thing, but they're not hiring. And restaurants, of course, which I have experience in. Our And factory workers, you know, in that enclosed thing. And I'm, I'm not wearing no face mask. Ain't gonna do it. Ain't gonna do it. Also, too, on my, in my particular case, transportation, because all I have, all I have is, uh, these legs <laughs> and um, and getting to a job that see I'm in uh, Woodstock Illinois to like Fox Lake Illinois or Cary or Belvedere that takes a long distance to get there <clears throat> but there again the face mask face mask and you know what's very interesting with a lot of the employers out there when you ask them okay they a lot of these places is like <laughs> which I refuse to do and brethren when you stand like that it's going to cost you are you ready for that you know, to be honest, I thought I was, but man, praise the Lord for you, Church of the Living God. Praise the Lord for every single one of you. Thank you. But see, standing like that is going to cost you. Especially, too, when you murmur. <laughs> We're going to be getting to that in a later video. Maybe not today, but um, that's coming. But when you constantly make aware of how ridiculous all these nonsensical um, cleaning and sterilizing things are, you know, for a virus that number one isn't even deadly, and number two, I believe, is no longer amongst us. I believe it has passed. And the only ones that are keeping it alive are the media. I've said that to you before. But you know what's interesting? When you ask some of these uh, would-be employers, when the vaccine is finally made available, are you going to require your employees to get the vaccine?
lot of them say yes. No matter what, no matter the employment, whether you're flipping a burger, once the vaccine is uh, released, you'll have to take the vaccine. Whether you're working at Wally World, at the Wally World, Wally World, Walmart, evil. Again, hang on. Take that vaccine. You see? And then, of course, once you take the vaccine, you won't need the face mask. It's a lot more difficult than some of you can imagine. If you're at this time, who is actively out there trying to find work, hello, and seeing all these things that you need to do in order to even be considered. And I'm not going to, I'm not compromising on that, brother. No. No. There's no way. There's no way. Like I've said before, that's up between that's between you and the Lord. That's between you and the Lord. And as far as I'm concerned, it's been settled for myself personally. But it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you a lot. Are you ready for that? I thought I was. But yet, upon receiving this uh, email from this dear beloved brother, it just so happened that today, as part of my morning devotional time with the Lord in the study and reading of Scripture, I just happened to read John chapter 16. Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. And turn in the King James scriptures to John chapter 16. <clears throat> We're going to read this whole thing. Can you handle that? John chapter 16. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues, yea, the time cometh, that whoso killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you, because they know not the Father, nor me. Jesus is the Father. But right there, they will separate you from their company. That whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. Because you stand for the truth that this virus is not even around now, I believe. Okay? And all this is fictitious, being kept alive by the media. And remember, you're the enemy if you're not wearing a face mask. And those who are Christians say so you're not thinking of the common good. That whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father or me. Hold your place there. Second Timothy chapter one verse seven.
on to verse 10. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 7 on to verse 10. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. Circle that. Which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. We have not been given the spirit of fear. Even though the world and even those who call themselves Christians mark us as the enemy for standing for the truth of God's word. And, uh, beg your pardon, beg your pardon. and um, seeking to expose those who promulgate this lunacy, namely the Jesuits, Catholicism. Let's continue. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me, whither goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled, thy, filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment, of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. Who is the prince of this world? The prince of the power of the air? Lucifer, that old serpent, the devil, Satan. And um, uh, very quickly, I have to, um, I, we have to address this. Verse 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him on to you. And of course, John 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Whom the Father will send in my name. Verse 7, I will send him on to you. Mm. Mm. Perhaps maybe Jesus Christ is God the Father. A oh, gee, you wouldn't say. Let's continue. I had to do that. I have a uh, uh, reading from verse 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, 
that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall shew it unto you. Spiritual body, the Godhead, one God, not three different persons, not us. A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he saith unto us, A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me. And because I go to the Father, they said therefore, What is this he that he saith, A little while? We cannot tell what he saith. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him, and said unto them, Do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said a little while, and ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and ye shall see me? Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful. But your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Let me read that again. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. And then, yes, they were very sorrowful that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. But he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and therein is joy. And for us, for us today, we're going through this. We're dead to this world, brethren. But see, soon. We're going to hear our, uh, hear our name called, and we're going to be caught up, raised from the dead, in a way, manner of speaking. But your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Verse 21. A woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye know therefore, and ye now therefore, excuse me, have sorrow. But I will see you again. And your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. Do you have joy in the blessed hope? Or are we being distracted by what we see in our peripheral vision? Hi. It's easy to do, isn't it? Let's continue. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto, have ye asked nothing in my name? Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. And of course, Acts, hold your place there, of course. Acts chapter 4. Come on, fingers. Acts chapter 4. Verse 12, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That was Acts chapter 4, verse 12. And of course, of course, very familiar scriptures here, Philippians Philippians. 
Philippians chapter 2. Verses 9 on to verse 11. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Back to John 16, verse 25 now. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall shew you plainly of the Father. At that day ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you, For the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. I come forth from the Father, and am come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? First Corinthians First Corinthians verses 10 on to verse 16. First Corinthians chapter 2, excuse me, verses 10 on to verse 16. But God hath revealed them unto us by his capital S Spirit, and the Lord is that Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit, lowercase s, of man, which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the capital S, Spirit of God. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And when you go back to John chapter 16, when he's talking about going on to the Father and stuff like that, and then his disciples in verses 29 and verse 33, uh, 29 on to verse 30, his disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. And then our Lord says, Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? Verse 14 in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Do you get it? Finally, behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, 
that ye shall be scattered every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. The Father is the soul. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit. Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, is the body. Spirit, soul, and body. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, these three are one. This ain't that difficult. Unless you're spiritually discerned. These things have I spoken unto you, brother, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. See that? But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer. We ain't got that much longer to go, brethren. Like a brother of mine says, once the second wave finally is officially instituted, uh, which I now am firmly convinced that what they're going to do in that is simply turn up the thing for the 5G and everybody is going to get sick to produce these fictitious COVID-19 symptoms. Yes, I am now quite persuaded that um, they are going to use 5G as um, the ends justify the means. What's the end? World domination. And what's the means? Corona gonna get you the poison crown. 5G. <laughs> Vaccine. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Like I said, it just so happened that I read this this morning as part of my devotional time with the Lord. And then when I um, saw that email by my brother, it's like, oh, wow, wow. You know, if you're one of us who... Um, can't find work or if you're one of those who have been laid off from work you can't get bored spending time in this book the scriptures the King James scriptures the true and real scriptures it's when our minds gravitate to things of the world and that's a dangerous thing. And I'm going to be addressing something very close around those lines in a couple of upcoming videos. But um, be of good cheer, brethren, sisters. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, He has overcome the world. And we are in Him. And He is in us. Said it's very easy. It's very easy. Especially, you know, right now, um, like yesterday, here in my town, here in glorious Woodchuck, Illinois, it rained all day. And right now it's uh, gloomy and gray. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Remember, we're looking uh, for that blessed hope. Caught up, 
before it is too late. And whenever the Lord decides that time is, and, you're, and you who are going to be left behind, See, the Lord Jesus Christ could call us up at any moment. And there are those out there who figure, well, before I die, I'll get right and get saved. While calling themselves Christians, and they're not. Woe be to you. Woe be to you. Anyway, brethren, that's that's going to be it for this one. This is, um, I just, uh, like I said, I, this was part of my morning uh, devotional study and reading of uh, the scriptures with our Lord, our Father, Jesus Christ. Remember, the author of the scriptures is always present whenever you, the Church of the God, uh, Church of the Living God, read it. The author is always present. love you brethren sisters I'm praying for a lot of you uh, very quickly um, I want to make a, um, a request on the behalf of our beloved brother um, Aaron Darren judge he's really struggling right now brethren he's really struggling he was at least yesterday but Keep him in your prayers. Also, the beloved Matthew Millinson. Keep him in your prayers, too. And also, brethren, pray for Victor Manjivar. I, I, he has been off of YouTube for a while. And um, Brother Victor, if you see this by any chance, um, get a hold of me, brother. I'm... I'm Concern for you. I hope everything is well with you. There are so many of you that I pray for and think about throughout my day. And um, keep your confidence in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ our Father. And be of good cheer. Because our time is coming to an end. Those out there, anyway, that's it. I have two rather large videos that are coming. Um, this morning, um, I kind of went through my notes for them and finalized kind of a little bit. I still got to pray over them. Um, and I, I will let the cats out of the bag to let you know what's coming. One video is going to be on consequences. Consequences. Yes. And another video, the other one, is going to be on complaining. Which, um, which, uh, Lord willing, will convict a lot of us. Hi! <laughs> but, uh, anyway, those are coming. They might come today, but, uh, for surely tomorrow. For surely tomorrow. Because it's, uh, we'll be going through get, get a few scriptures. <laughs> so. I love you, brethren, sisters. Praying for you. Pray for one another. And we will see you in the next video. Love you.